It's no secret that real estate is one of the best investment vehicles out there. But how can we determine which strategies will best align with our financial ambitions? Well, you've come to the right spot. Whether you're an active real estate entrepreneur, a passive investor, or looking to get into real estate investing, our goal is to provide investors with the insights and strategies for building our portfolios all while protecting our capital. I'm Daniel Nichols, and this is the Two Smart Assets Real Estate Investing Podcast. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another Off the Beaten Path episode. And with us once again is Eric Oliver, Managing Director at Cost Segregation Authority. So Eric, what's your number one tip, tool, or resource for investors, entrepreneurs, or anyone who is looking to go off the beaten path to create success? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so I've thought a lot about this. And I, I really think for me, and I can only base this on personal experience, but for me, um, knowing your strengths and being willing and humble to identify what you're not good at and outsource that, right? And so I'll give you a, a, a story. Um, what was it? I was in college, didn't have a lot of money, wanted a, a new stereo system in my car, right? This was back in the, the 90s. I wanted to put the <laughs> box in the back. So, you know, with the big subwoofers. Oh, yeah. So I bought the stereo and they wanted 150 bucks to install it. And I said, eh, I can probably figure this out. How hard could it be, right? So the hard thing is you got to get a wire from your battery in the front of your car to the trunk in the back, right? You got to run right. a wire. And they have their ways of doing it. And I spent, I'm not kidding you, I spent three days. I pulled the carpet <laughs> out of my car. I mean, I was taking, I'm like, maybe I'll just drill a hole underneath the car and run it underneath. And I was thinking of everything. It took me three days and countless hours to figure it out. And actually, to be honest, the way I figured it out is I called them with my tail between my legs and said, listen, you guys wanted to install this. I said no, because I didn't want to pay the money. I've been spending three days trying to figure out how to get this damn wire from the front to the back. How do you do it? And you know what they said? They okay. said, get a hanger. And you know where you pull your um, hood? There's a, you know, you pull it to get your hood open in the front yeah. of the car. There's a wire that goes between the firewall. It's a little rubber gasket. They said, get a hanger. Tape the wire on there, poke it through that rubber gasket and pull it through to the back. <laughs> and it would, I mean, now that I had the right information, it would, it took me, you know, 15 minutes to get that wire from front to back. And so I learned, um, that was one example. I'll give you one more example. This is a little shorter example, but my first rental property, I lived in Virginia, was moving to New York and um, wanted to rent out my old house. And I said, okay, I can manage this, right? How hard could it be? Yeah. So we put an ad out there. I get the first person that comes to me, they come to our house, they meet us. It's a nice couple. They seem so friendly. Of course, they're going to pay their rent on time, right? So we moved to New York. These guys pay rent the first two months, and then I never see another rent check. Oh, they stop man. answering my phone calls. Moral of the story is pay the 10% to get a management company if that's not what you're good at. I wasn't a good property manager. I mean, I wasn't even the same state. I was trying to manage it from New York versus Virginia. And so I've tried to instill this in, in all that I do now. And, and it, sometimes it's humbling, right? Sometimes you think you're good at it, but when you really look at it, it's not a skill that you <laughs> excel at. And so sometimes you have to say, okay, this isn't my strength. How can I outsource this to somebody who's, whose strength it is? And sometimes that means you're going to pay a little money for it, right? But I'll tell you what, as you start to grow your business, your time becomes valuable. And so it might be worth paying $1,000 to somebody if they can get a project done in two hours versus you, it might take you 10 hours. And what is your time worth? And so um, that's kind of the advice I would give. And then in terms of real estate and what I do in, in cost segregation and taxes, pay the money for a good CPA because it's going to you're going to get rewarded. And, you know, a lot of CPAs, I love CPAs. We work with CPAs all the time, but there's a lot of tax preparers out there. Mm. And a tax preparer is very different than a tax strategist or somebody who's going to strategize taxes with you. And so, yeah, that, you know, a tax strategy manager or somebody who's going to sit down with you and talk taxes with you is going to be a lot more than somebody you know, you go to H&R Block at Walmart, you give them your W-2, they charge you 30 bucks and they do your taxes. <laughs> They're not telling you how to reduce that tax bill, right? They're just processing paperwork. And a lot of people say they have a CPA, which they do, but really that CPA is just processing paperwork. You go give them your W-2s, you give them your closing statements, your improvement costs on your assets, 
they process it through and you pay your tax bill um, versus somebody who's really strategizing with you to say, sit down once a quarter and say, okay, you know, looks like you're starting to make a little bit of money this year. What are we going to do to to maximize your deductions? Or do we need to go buy another property? Or do we need to do a cost segregation study? Or do you need to go buy a truck? You know, there's a number of ways you can mitigate those tax liabilities, but that would be my advice to probably your audience where their investors is spend the money to get yourself a good CPA, somebody who specializes in real estate, somebody that sits down with you, you know, quarterly or at least biannually and goes over your stuff to make sure that they're, you know, maximizing your their your deductions and reducing your tax liabilities. So great tip, man. Couldn't agree with you more, especially with the the part about you know realizing your strengths and your weaknesses. I know I've been guilty of that many many times, too many times, really. And then also, you know, the fact of you know really hiring a CPA, somebody who a tax strategist, somebody who's really going right. to help you in that area. So huge, especially if you're an investor or a, you know a business owner or whatever. Right? You need right. you're really going to need a, a strong uh, tax strategist in your corner. So really appreciate you sharing that, Eric. Before we get out of here, tell listeners uh, how they can find out more about you and your business. Yeah. So you can find us. Um, our website is www.costsegauthority.com. That's just C-O-S-T-S-E-G authority.com. Uh, my contact information is on there, my phone number, my email. Uh, please use this as a resource. Um, you know, we don't charge by the hour. Um, feel free to call me, ask me any questions you might have around uh, real estate or taxes, um, especially in terms of depreciation. Um, If we don't know the answer, we've got CPAs and folks on our staff who do. And so we can get you the answer. But yeah, please use this as a resource. Love to hear that, Eric. Really appreciate you taking the time. All right. Sounds good. Thanks.